I'm Casey Quaretti, this is Chat and Dish, and today we're going to combine fresh oranges, little bitty cherry tomatoes, a few other ingredients, and make the most marvelous chutney you're ever going to taste. Perfect on top of fish, chicken, but my all-time favorite is when you use it in combination with guacamole on top of a quesadilla. Let's get started. Let's do a quick cruise by the ingredients. We're going to need a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil, two tablespoons balsamic vinegar, two boxes of cherry tomatoes, a tablespoon of fresh grated ginger, six fresh basil leaves, then a half a teaspoon of mustard seed, the juice and zest of one lemon. We're going to be using two full oranges, a nice big Hungarian pepper or a small jalapeno pepper depending on the heat that you like in your dish three tomatillos, one package of green onions, and then about two tablespoons. I use parsley. Um, you can certainly use cilantro. My husband won't eat cilantro, thinks it tastes like dirty socks. So it's parsley for us today. People always think of chutney as something that takes a really long time to cook, but let me tell you, the cooking part of this one is super easy. Take your cherry tomatoes, pour them onto a baking sheet, drizzle them with two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. Don't worry, it's not gonna go all over at first. Another two tablespoons of our extra virgin olive oil. You're going to mix these up well with your hands so that the tomatoes are coated. All you have to do is pop this into a 400 degree preheated oven for 30 minutes. Tomatillos are a staple in Mexican cuisine. They come with this wonderful little papery outside that you need to pull off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to chop our tomatillos and we're going to dry roast them on top of the stove. You also have the option, if you want, you can go ahead and give them a rough chop and put them in with your cherry tomatoes. Combine the two, then you don't even have to have a second dirty pan. I kind of like doing them on top of the stove, dry roasting them, makes them taste a little bit nuttier. Dry frying pan, just let them cook while the cherry tomatoes are in the oven. Just give your spring onions or your green onions a nice chop. We're just giving our parsley or cilantro a medium rough chop. Grab your pepper, split it down the middle, and then get the seeds out. And then go ahead and give it a rough chop. We need about a tablespoon of fresh minced ginger. And the easiest way to peel your ginger is to take the back of a spoon and just go run down kind of hard and fast and the peel will come right off. Just grate your ginger directly into the bowl with your other ingredients. And what you're going to have to do is kind of turn your grater over, take a look and eyeball how much you have there. Don't put that zester or grater away yet. We've got a lot more use for it. Now we need to zest our lemon, then cut it in half and squeeze the juice in with the rest of your ingredients. Now we need the zest from both of our oranges. Next step, remove the top and the bottom of each orange and then cut off all the rind or the pith. You're going to go right down slightly into the orange itself. You don't want any of that white pith. It's really, really bitter and will make the chutney kind of yucky. Now I'm just cutting the oranges into small segments and then into bite-sized pieces. Next up, add that half a teaspoon of mustard seed. And mustard seeds, they're really, they're just crunchy, kind of warm and yummy. I'm just adding that last bit of extra virgin olive oil. Remember I told you a half a cup and we'd only used a couple of tablespoons. Now just give these ingredients a really good mix. You want the orange juice and the olive oil to mix together and to coat all of the green onions and the herbs. Hey, hey, now we're ready for our cherry tomatoes. These cherry tomatoes are absolutely perfect. Roasted, some are a little bit brown. They're nice and juicy. They smell great. Now, let's go ahead and add these to the rest of our ingredients. Oh, our tummy tea's smell marvelous. They're all softened. They're letting go of some of their seeds and their flavor is so nutty at this point. Let's go ahead and add these. Another good stir and our chutney is done. Now, this chutney will keep up to seven days in the refrigerator. But you know what? We're not going to do that. We're going to start using it right away and I'm going to make some quesadillas. Now I've got a whole wheat flour tortilla. I'm going to spread some fresh spinach in there, some chopped cooked chicken, just right across one side of it. I like to do my quesadillas where I just take one tortilla and then I end up folding it in half. A little bit of really thinly sliced red onion is going to go on there. That's going to give the inside of it a little bit of zip. And now I've got a combination of four different Mexican cheeses, 
that I'm going to spread on top. So that's our quesadilla. We're going to fold this in half. We're going to pop it over to the stove. I'll see you over there. All right, what I like to do now is just use a pair of scissors to cut each of these quesadillas into thirds. All right, here's our guacamole, and we're just gonna spread that across the top of our quesadilla. What would a quesadilla be without guacamole, right? Now, we top this with our marvelous chutney, and don't hold back. And lastly, I've taken the basil leaves and I've finely shredded them, or chiffronade. They go on top, and we're ready to taste. Oh, I cannot wait for a nice big bite of this chutney-topped quesadilla. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, this is fantastic. The tomatillos are so nutty. Mmm, mmm. And the cherry tomatoes roasted with balsamic, you can taste those things individually. Mm. And the citrus, the lemon, and the orange. Oh, this is a fiesta of flavors right in my mouth. <laughs> As always, thank you for visiting and sharing this wonderful chutney-topped quesadilla with me. Till next time, I'm going to miss you. Cheers!